Hey there, it's Natalie. Welcome to the sewing room. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make this cute little snowman out of sock, some chenille, and a uh, little bit of buffalo plaid. Anyway, I am going to put the pattern. Uh, it's going to be in my Etsy store. I'll put the link in the description box below. I'm so glad that you're here. This is an easy project to get ready for Christmas. And uh, be sure you like, subscribe, give me a little thumbs up, and I'll see you at the cutting table. To do our little snowman, you need to print off the pattern and uh, cut it out. There's the little sash or the scarf. This body is marked with the face and the button placement. If you use big buttons, you'll probably need to re space that differently. Okay, I was going to say resize, but space it differently. I'm going to use chenille. This is an old cutter bedspread. It had some flaws in it, and it's going to be perfect for this, but you could use quilt, or you could use drop cloth, or muslin, or any fabric that you, you could probably even use an old shirt. Okay, so that's going to be the body of the snowman. You're also going to need <clears throat> some pins, of course. Don't cut your pattern out with your good scissors. Okay, these are my good scissors. These are my paper scissors. All right, cut your pattern with your paper scissors. You're going to need a couple of pins uh, or a pen. I'm going to mark mine with this Sharpie because it's going to be cut off. You can use a, a Marks Be Gone pen to mark your fabric if you want to because what we're going to do, <clears throat> this is the cut line, but we're not going to cut, and I'll show you that in a second, so don't worry about that. Cut the pattern out with your paper scissors. You're going to need something for a little piece of jute to wrap around the top of the toboggan. I have a shadow there uh, around the top of the toboggan. You could use ribbon if you want to. There's the little tea Nazi nose. You can use just a regular orange fabric or I found some of this. It's kind of more pumpkin, pumpkin color. Anyway, it's all, of our, all that our little Walmart had. So out of felt, then you don't have to finish out the edges. This one you just glue together anyway and then glue it on. Uh, a little something for the sash or the scarf. And uh, what I'm going to use is this salvaged, I've got two sleeve pieces from one of my other projects that's on my YouTube channel. Uh, the little shirt that I put a lace on the bottom of it. Anyway, I'm going to use this for the scarf and I've stitched it together. Right back here, you can't even tell because I matched the plaid so good. Okay, uh, but this is a little bundle that I got at Walmart and it's got a whole bunch of, it's got a little tinier plaid and then it's got a black and white. Uh, also, some buttons. Now, you can buy a card of buttons. You can go through your little stash of buttons and see if you've got a button or, hallelujah, pandemic leftover. You can go through your big stash of buttons and see if you can find some buttons for the front of his little body, okay? Too many buttons. Can you have too many buttons? You're also going to need some fluff to stuff we stuff it with and him or her whether I mean you decide whether it's a him or her and then uh, I picked up I'm gonna make I think I'm gonna make some kits and put them in my Etsy shop and if I do I'll put the link in the description box below I got these from the Dollar Tree and this is gonna be his toboggan one of these so I can get two toboggans out of a thing uh, that would probably be cute but these these little pair of socks I've had for a long time I'm not ever gonna wear them this is what I'm gonna use for my toboggan for my snowman and I'll have one left over so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I pinned this in place pin just the fabric together so it's not gonna shift on me and I'm gonna lay this little guy right here and just a couple of pins in here and I'm gonna I'm not gonna cut this out here because I don't want it to really shift on me. This is a little bit different than what we've done before. But just hang on. So I've got some seam allowance on the bottom. You know, make sure that you've got some space up here. You can use one of these pins and mark around the edge. But I'm going to do with a little Sharpie so you can see, because this is going to be cut away, okay? So I'm going to mark with a Sharpie just so I can see this edge. Now, if you're using just a regular fabric, you can go ahead and cut him out. But with this chenille, or like if you were you doing a quilt, a little quilt body, I would just mark around. So now what I'm going to do, 
take him off. Now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch in a quarter of an inch. I'll just run my presser foot right along this edge so I can cut this away. I am not even trying to be confusing. You can either, if you want to sew on this line, you can, or you can, it's designed to go a quarter of an inch in, but if you want to sew on that line directly, you can. It'd be just a tiny bit bigger uh, snowman. So I'm at the top of the head, and you'll notice on your pattern that there's two little marks. Uh, that is, we're going to open it, leave it open at the top, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and scoot in, like I told you, about a quarter of an inch, so it's about a pressure foot width, and I've got my stitch way too short. Here we go. And it's just easier with this chenille to do it this way rather than to have all of this raggy stuff off the edges while you're trying to feed this through. And so I started right here, and I'm going to stop right about here. Okay, he's all stitched, and we're ready to cut him out. Much easier this way. We're going to cut him out and turn him right side out. <clears throat> So if you were stitching this, if you cut it out first, then you'd be dealing with all these little nubby things. Anyway, and I'm going to clip just a tiny bit in the neck for the turn. All right, and then you'll have to decide if you want this to be the face or you want this side to be the face where you're going to put the little eyes and the mouth and the little carrot nose and then some buttons. It's kind of a rough face. I don't want to decide right this second. I'll wait till I get him stuffed and then I'll decide. Okay, before I stuff this guy, I want to go ahead and mark his uh, or hers uh, face. So I am going to just kind of place this at the top. This top is where we're going to stuff from. I've got some, let's see if this will work. I've got some holes poked there. Yep, that'll work. And then before I move this out of the way, I want to make sure that I've got it marked good. And I can see those right there. I'm going to wait about the buttons and see which buttons I decide on. And I'm going to go ahead and stuff it. And I'm using... This polyfill that's from Walmart. Now you can decide how soft or how firm you want this, but like right here, uh, see how this is kind of curved in just a little bit? Just because I don't have it stuffed really well there. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more down in that little side. So that rounds on out the way I want it to. Forgot to tell you, you're going to need a glue gun too. So that's looking better. So look who came to see me. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh kitty cat, oh kitty cat. All right, so I'm gonna take this stuffing all the way to the top of the head, like that, where it's even a little bit out because that's gonna fill up the toboggan area. Now, you can use acrylic paint to make these dots. 
if you use a sharpie let me just kind of show you real quick now because it's already stitched it's not going to go through to the back and see that's kind of a little rough for the face i think i like this smoother face better but the sharpies will bleed a little bit so just make sure that you don't leave the tip on there too long so it bleeds out you might want to test it on a piece of uh, an extra piece of fabric someplace let's see there's a piece of mouth right there and there there and there While my glue gun is getting hot, I'm going to go ahead and cut the scarf out of this uh, piece of buffalo plaid that I have here. I'm going to put this on the fold. Now you can use fleece or cotton or like, you know, like I said, like these pieces like that. You could do an upcycle, so something that you have laying around. You don't have to go and buy something. All right, and then we'll fold that in half, like that, glue it, and then glue it onto his face. All right, move that over there. And on the socks, I can always trim off some more, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the way up to where this heel bend starts. Okay, and if you're doing something that has a ravelly edge like that, I mean, you could, you know, curl that. That could totally be your edge uh, to the top of his head. And this could be the top side if you want to. I'm going to use this as the bottom part. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to use this as the bottom part. I think that'll fit on his head, and that gives me that little design. I could still use this and curl it like this is done, and then hot glue it on. That's the neat thing about some of the knit products is when you give them a little tug, they do a little roll-up thing. All right, so I've got that. That Did I lose the nose? Here's the nose. Let's put its boggin on first. And you can kind of decide where you want that little hat to fit. Now, let's do one more thing. Let me do this again, just so you can kind of see. All right, if we did this, because I just want to show you. So this could totally work as the edge of the toboggan, all right? And then that would be up at the top. That could work. Do I like that better? I might. Let me put this one more time and try it again. Don't y'all love whenever I experiment with y'all watching?
it is super easy for me to get distracted with all of these buttons. And this is just one little sack of black buttons. I've misplaced my sack. Oh, here it is. And so I was looking through here for t basically t little buttons with two, just two holes. And there's some little ones, but I, that's not the size I wanted. I wanted this size. I'm sure like those, they're not mother of pearl, but they kind of look mother of pearl. Anyway, don't get distracted. So I think these two... I think these will work. They're about the same size, same color. Put these back over here. Do I want to put those in an extra little sack just for later on? Anyway, all right, so I can use my pattern or I can just kind of place where I would like for these buttons to go. I don't want to get them too low. So I think there, let's see what the pattern shows. There it is. And so there from the face, there's the nose. One is there. And one is right there. All right, and I've got a like a cruel needle or a large eye needle. And uh, I've got some crochet thread, some of my vintage stash crochet stuff. Need to go in. And you could sew it with black thread if you wanted to, or red thread, or whatever, you know, a coordinating thread. You don't have to do it just like I do it, by any stretch of the imagination. All right, so I'm about to do a knot. I'm not going to go through there a second time. This is not going to get any wear on it. So, and it's not a toy, because the, the nose is glued on, and the buttons are not really super secure, so you're not going to want to, like, give this to a baby to play with. Please don't do that. Make me a little bow. Pull some of that back through. You could use Baker's twine if you wanted to. Almost done. All right, there's my other one. And let's make sure that this is where I want that to go because of its size. I think I'll scoot it down just a tiny bit because of its size. And you can do that too. knot and another knot just to be on the safe side a little bow you could put a little extra knot in the bow to make sure that it doesn't come undone but again since it's not going to get played with uh, that's probably going to be okay. We're almost done. Let's put his scarf on. Kind of scrunch that down just a little bit. There we go. And maybe since it's cold outside, he needs some pink cheeks. Oh, I know why I keep calling him he. He's a snow man, not a snow lady. All right, so I've just got some of my powder blush. And if you have like pink eyeshadow or something like that, that's a little bit more pinky than fleshy color, you can do that. That gives him some little, little cheeks. All right, there he is. It's so cute. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the video. Be sure you like, share, subscribe, give me a little thumbs up. Woohoo! And I will see you next time. Bye bye.